some expectations from what we're expecting from our Ana. Um, I mean, without really looking at the enemy team composition, let's just kind of say, like, why would you play Ana? Basically, as Ana, you're the main source of healing on the non DPS targets, the tank line, you're going to be healing a lot. When you're the same kind of thing that we we're talking about with a Lucio, you look for cooldown value specifically with Nade when your tank line is playing aggressively because there's more likely of a chance that there's going to be follow up on the Nade and there's more likely a chance that you're actually going to land the Nade because a lot of the things that are going to be, uh, you know, shielding the Nade, uh, people avoiding the Nade, watching for Nade, people are going to be distracted because there's going to be a big fat monkey in their face. So they're not thinking about Biotic Grenade, which means there's more likely of a chance of actually landing it. Um, in terms of sleep dart, that is extremely contextual. It uh, can either be used defensively or offensively. If you're using it offensively, in the same way that we thought about Nade, using it in synchron uh, synchronization with your team, same thing applies. Uh, if you you know throw fish for sleep darts the entire time, it's going to get avoided or there's not going to be as much follow-up. So we want to try and synchronize our cooldown pressure aggressively or you can sit on your sleep dart defensively. Um, with positioning, you want good sight lines, but also a good sight line for you to be able to land cooldowns aggressively. Uh, so like you do want, you might occasionally like look for a flank or things like this. That's which is why it's very important to time it properly. Uh, and then your nano boost most likely is going to be either, uh, I mean, you got a couple of good targets, but most of the time it's going to be on monkey, uh, depending on the situation. Okay, so let's, uh, let's check this out. Let's have some fun and let's roll. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Now, this is a situation where you could absolutely look for nade. Now, the question is, is would you be able to, like, would your monkey be able to follow up off of the nade? Maybe not. Um, what you're about to do here, I anticipate, is nade hog, maybe forces vape, forcing the back off, sure. You could also nade backline here, and then maybe land a shot. If you land a shot along with your nade, then there's a very high chance that your tracer can maybe finish the kill. But this is what we're talking about. You see how kind of like this Ana is swinging wide? Do you see this? They're playing, like, look at the brig. Look at this. Do you see this? Why are they playing this sloppy and this aggressive? Well, because they see monkey, because your tank line is in. So this is your window for, they're not paying attention to you. So this is your winner to go for something aggressive. Now you're down your diva, so you're not, so you maybe you're not really gonna get a hundred percent kill, but it's worth a shot. So let's actually see what you do here. Thank you, I, I would probably go for nade on backline, but you definitely go for a nade. You're sitting on it still. I mean, I don't see any drawback to using your nade. Essentially, there's there's no real drawback because you're gonna get it back by the time they actually get on top of you. Worst case scenario. I don't really, again, I don't, do, you, do, you, do you see what I'm talking about with, uh, like, timing here, though? Wh who cares if you sleep this ball? You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares? Is your tank line in any position to go aggressive to punish the fact that one person is disabled? No. So don't, just, so just sit on it. Wait, wait for them to overextend into you. Like, if this ball had slammed in here, different story. But this is a wasted sleep, even if you hit it. Now, that was risky. Now, this rotation is late because of the sleep dart, right? But in terms of timing of this nade, this is exactly what we're looking for. You kind of see what I'm saying? Do you have to wait for your monkey to go aggressive to nade? No, but you need to make sure that the enemy team is actually doing something. If you nade this, these guys have to peace out or they die. That's fine. You're more than willing to take that because that means you're able to get out safely. Okay. Now the real question Okay, that sleep is fine. Why is that sleep fine? Look at what's happening. Your team is in. They hook your your hook your Winston. You're in. Might even go for a nade there. Absolutely go for a nade there. I don't know why you're not nading there. Yeah, you should have naded this. You should have naded this. Because if you nade this here, it's gonna hit Brig, and Brig is gonna die. And it's probably might even hit their echo as well. I don't know why you're saving that nade defensively. You're so and, and and then in terms of positioning, let's look at your positioning as well. You walk forward, and then you end up walking into your tank line, who then gets slammed, and then the tracer clips you. So this is top 500. And even if we ignore the nitpick on the sleep on the ball or the attempt on the sleep in the ball right here, what has happened is you have essentially. Naded, waited to nade way too long when your tank line was engaged. You had a free nade on their brig and on your own tank line. I don't care if your monkey's purple. And then you walk into the middle of your team, get slammed, and then die. So this is a, this is, this is a scrim, okay, or a, or a tournament or something. So this is coordinated, right? You need to go. Again, it's all about the timing here. 
Bottom left, top 500. It's like 4.3, I think. 4.2. You're at Monkey's Inn. Why aren't you? Hi. We talk about cooldown value. This is screaming biotic grenade right now. Instead, you're looking around. Because this is a scrim or a comp game, I'm going to assume that your monkey is calling these engages. If you need your monkey to give you more time, or you need to, like, or you need a chance to rotate, you need to call this out. This this is unacceptable because this is essentially goes will go from a free kill on their Ana to potentially not a free kill. Like like now now look now look now look now you're needing. Oh my gosh! Oh, you literally just lost your monkey and their Ana survived literally because you were late. Look at this Ana's positioning. Her name is is perfect. Clap my she's at look what is she doing? She's literally asking to get her cheeks clapped. She's at 200 HP and just self-nated and then walked into the open. Holy crap. She was late, she wasted a cooldown and then bumbled around like an idiot. Holy smokes, dude. And this you get away with this. Or they get away with this, and your monkey dies for it because you're late. So, agony. And I don't know if that's your Winston's fault or if it's your fault, but you need to take responsibility for it. Remember, whenever we review a scrim VOD, we always bleed into team play and team stuff. And so, you know, if this is ranked and your monkey just goes in without even being sure that you're ready, okay, it happens. But you, you, you're on a team. This shouldn't happen. You fight a six, you know? Hi. Hi, Kitty. Okay, uh, let's look at this again. What are our options here? Think about it. Think about it. Just think, just think for a second. Because this isn't a straightforward situation. Right? They're copying the monkey. What do you guys think? For me, if I'm nanoing monkey, Unless I know they also have a nano monkey or something to punish me, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for something aggressive. So like right now, you did you needed to nade this. You needed to nade this. I don't care if they have like even if they have nano monkey, I would probably still look for a nade here. Your monkey's going in, you need to throw a nade. Now you don't have to position aggressively if you know that they have something to trade. Like if they have primal monk nano monkey as well, then this range is fine, but you can still nade this, right? You can still nade this. You get pack, you have sleep dart. Even if this echo builds primal, there's nothing she can do if you have sleep dart. But there's nothing she can do. You see that? Instead, what, what what happens with your nano monkey? Like I want you to look at your monkey's perspective. Let's actually look at look look at your monkey's perspective. Alright? He's in. Saves his jump. If you get this nade, on is dead. Okay? Ana's dead. If Ana dies, then now that Diva dies. The Diva's demacked, right? Then maybe the Brig, right? And then that Echo dies. You kind of see what I'm saying? So like your your timing is all off with these nades. You don't need. To, you really don't. You shouldn't sit on nade uh, as a defensive cooldown unless they're running like Moira, Lucio, Sombra, Trace, or Reaper, and they have a monkey on you, right? Like like nade is almost always used aggressively. Almost always, it's just more efficient. Right, it's a more efficient use to to completely deny their healing and guarantee a kill than it is to use it on yourself in this kind of circumstance. Now, I want you, honest in like platinum, to understand that part of the reason why I'm saying this is because number one, our Ana is in a really good defensible location. Number two, my Ana has a brig. Number three, my Ana also has sleep dart. And number four, look at the enemy composition. Where is the enemy tracer sitting on cart? Where is the enemy monkey? They don't have one. They can copy monkey, but that's it. So there's a lot of if, if, if qualifying statements, but generally whenever you safely can, you want to look for nade aggressively. Aggressively, You want to nade the enemy team. Whenever you safely can, you always want to nade aggressively. Now, whenever you safely can is something that as you get better at understanding the game and the more you play, you'll understand the situations when you can and when you can't. This, you absolutely can. Good. I like this. There's downtime. Check for the ball. If the ball gets sloppy with staging, maybe you can punish him. Uh, 
Nice. Easy. That's the thing with Ana is like when you have a really strong position with Ana, a really strong defensible position, that's why it's so good for Ana. Not only does it cut down on your deaths, but it cut down on your deaths or your risk so dramatically that it means that you almost never have to use nade defensively in a lot of these situations. So like that, that's why like these high ground positions are so strong because it's like the only thing that really threatens you is a tracer flank all the way behind the only place that you can get to and a monkey jumping on you, right? And, and, and a sleep dart can handle one of those, your brig can handle the other. So like, all right, we're gonna push. This is just so frustrating to me. Chat, Get back in anybody in chat answer this question. What should we be doing right now? Right now. Look for nade. A mode, right? You're rallying, man. Your monkey's in. Look at this. Look, look. Look, 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 look. But the funny thing is, is this, this, this diva is giving you way too much credit. Look at this diva. This diva's like, oh shoot, they're rallying. I gotta watch out for nade. The nade's coming. Oh no, oh no, oh no, here it comes, here it comes. She's, look at that. She even turns her, her matrix under, like tries to matrix her team because she's expecting nade. But you're just stupid. You're just stupid. You're, 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 you're just, you're just completely brain dead because you're, 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 you're what? Who cares? I don't care if the ball's there. If the ball boops you, okay. Well, it takes you all of half a second to throw a nade or sleep ball. And by the time you actually look for nade, you end up nading your diva. Nano is just an initiation to allow for nade. I mean, that is, that's not an, that's not an inaccurate way of looking at it. Uh, sorry, Cassidy, sorry. Um, I was good earlier. I got Cassidy, I got the Cassidy thing like 75% of the time. Um, I mean, you're not wrong. Nano is, it's a tool to allow for, allow for nade. I mean, a lot of the time, especially if you're not playing Zarya monkey, if you're playing Diva monkey, your, your Nano is probably going to get denied a lot. It's going to get slapped or booped or something like that. So, um, you know, that, that really is an opportunity forces the Diva, forces the, 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 the Ana and the Brig to pay a lot of attention to not nade. And then even if your monkey can't directly fall on the nade, your Tracer and Echo your, your can. Your tank line's going in and, and the nades are not there or you're just not prioritizing the nades. Uh, that needs to be fixed. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else here. I mean, not really, no. The nanas were fine. The sleep darts were mostly fine. The positioning was a little clunky, but I think you responded well to pressure. I think your rotations were relatively reasonable. You were okay with cover. There's a couple of awkward times, but it was mostly okay, but it's really just your nade value. Now, the, the problem with that is even though it's just your nade value, that's like saying, oh, you're Widowmaker, you just have bad aim. <laughs> you know, that's like kind of an integral part of the hero is to get your nade timing right. That's like one of the most important things you can be doing. It's like that in position. Um, I, I would rather have you nano your, you know, be nanoing your Tracer or your D.Va or even your Brig for Peel and you to be actually landing nades than for you to be getting it. Like, it, it, like nading is a, probably an equal importance as, uh, as nano. Like it's really, really important. It is the hero's defining, you know, like ability. Let's see what we got here. Hey, all right. Hot. Ha, ah, let's go. Okay, fine. My only complaint is obviously it's like you want to try and synchronize your monkey's pressure. It's like your monkey really wants to dive off of that. Like, if, um, and you would like to give your tracer position for that as well, but that might not always be possible. But what it will do is it will force their backline to tuck in and then maybe allow you to punish this monkey because they're all scared now, right? And now you have nade when your monkey actually goes in. Um, I might... I might, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can. I was gonna say, sometimes you can chuck a nade through here and catch people that tuck in this way, but yeah. It's also fine to just sit on it. Cause, cause you're gonna go back in again. All right, so we got nano now. I would ask the farm nano, that's what, okay, we're, we're our family nano, that's good. So you guys see that right there. So it's not always reasonable to farm up an ultimate um because you end up obviously feeding ult charge too but look at this look at the dps ultimates okay 60 38 53 right so they're not really close to an ultimate however we are very close so yes we're feeding dps ult charge but we'll get ours first which means we will win this fight first whoever gets first ultimate generally that's a pretty big deal right <laughs> Because then you build more ult charge off of winning the team fight. Because remember, guys, winning 
team fights builds more ult charge because they don't get support ult off of people you kill. In other words, if you kill their monkey, that's 500 healing ult charge that's gone. You see what I'm saying? Okay, Nano monkey, Nano, or Nade. This is where I would absolutely look for a Nade in here. I think you can get it. You're not even trying. I I'm pretty sure you could get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna land right about here, and that's gonna hit the Echo, and it's gonna hit the monkey too. Might hit the Diva, but probably won't. That Echo dies. Now, let's look again. Nade. Oh, you're just slow. You're just slow, man. You're just really, really slow in this. So you don't nade in the initial jump. Maybe you're doing that because you want to continue to push forward and look for a nade in the back line. But no. What do you do? You just yeet your sleep. You miss it, and then you don't even nade until the monkey is already bubbled. You've missed your opportunity to get a fat nade and backline because now the Diva and Winston are on top of you and paying attention. So once again, you've gotten this much value out of your, your cooldowns. You did your or you, you went for a sleep dart instead of a nade on the backline. That yes, the Diva might have eaten, but you would have eaten your sleep, and then the results are the same. And again, like again, if we look at this Diva's perspective here, what is she looking at right now? She just used all your matrix on a nade that never came. And now again, she's looking at monkey. He's not even looking at you. Why? Because you've got an Nano monkey inside of her. Do you think they could have walked it more before Nano? Yeah, they could have. But right now we're just, we're, we're really concerned about the timing of our, our cooldown value. And the fact that we're just, that we're not prioritizing getting that nade in. Nade, 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 nade. Like honestly, this right here is bad. Not only because, not only is this sleep dart bad because we're doing it instead of going for the nade right here, the free nade. But it's also bad because you have to think about why do we need to be sitting on sleep dart right now? Right, counter dive, exactly. Echo ult flank, sure. Primal, nano. There's a lot of things that could be coming up. And you're playing hyper aggressive for a nade that you don't land, that you don't do, basically don't go for. And then you've used your one defensive cooldown aggressively. And now you're in real trouble. Any Ana worth her salt knows what's about, what's about to happen right now. Chat, what's about to happen right now? Yeah, exactly. Monkey jump. Look at your monkey. I guarantee you it has bubble. Yep, there it is. So what do we do? What do we do? You go for a nade. You hit the brick. You hit the Ana. Heck, you can even hit the monkey if you want. It's not nearly as high value, but it's something, right? You know there's no nano. Maybe force out his primal early, right? Maybe kill him before he primals. But what do you do? You're going to go shoot Echo a little bit. And then you're not going to shoot Echo. And then you're going to worry about monkey bubble. And then the monkey bubble is going to break. And, and we're still sitting on nade. And we've done nothing with our nade. So... Just for the lower ranks in chat, just so we can be very clear about like our terminology, this isn't about carrying necessarily as Ana. It's just about getting the, doing the most value that you can possibly get out of the hero without dying. That's really, ev that's really every hero in the game's goal, is to get as much value as I possibly can without dying. Nade doesn't reduce your survivability that much when you're positioned well, when you have Sleep Dart and you have a Brick. And if you can get aggressive value out of Nade, that's one of the most valuable things that you can do. Shooting an Echo Hero here is not only hard, not only unlikely that you get the kill, but it's also not as valuable as getting a Nade in the back line. So I'm not saying don't shoot the Echo, but when you have a window to go for Nade, which you do, it's more valuable to go for Nade. It's just a series of like, what's the most, va what's the most valuable thing I can do right now? So I'm not saying learn to hard carry by looking for nades. That's just the best way to use nade most of the time. And it's especially a, a, a offensive to me because when you're on attack, it is harder to nade people. They're like, like for example here, how are you going to get aggressive nades up here? Very difficult, which is why it's important that you actually get value here. Maybe you can snowball onto high ground and then you can set up ahead of time. And then like, like there's all these sort of if then, but even on the easy space, Spoon fed, oh, it's really, even as like a gold or plat on a canade that, you're not doing it. Was that really the play? Was your team in any position to go aggressively off that nade? Not really, no. Would have been better to just sit on the anti-nade. 
and then nade now. You see this? Now, now you would go for the nade in here. Hit the Zen Zen dice. But you don't have it. You notice that? And now you're forced to nade defensively and your monkey dies anyway. To the Zen that would have died if you had naded him. You see what I'm saying? It keeps showing up. Why didn't you have nade? Because you just threw it. And then you miss the opportunity to go aggressively nade when your monkey goes in to save your monkey's life and kill the Zen. And then you fish for a sleep dart instead of sitting on it when guaranteed free opportunities for sleep dart. Like, you know there's going to be an opportunity for sleep dart any second. Why are you fishing? Sure. Okay, let's, let's, let's look a little more. Get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there. Oh, you didn't need... Oh, you, did. you need air. <laughs> you actually need air. <laughs> ah! Look at this! Look at this! Okay, chat, I'm sorry. We have to do this. I hate to bully, but this is this is GM. This is this is too high rank for this. I want you guys to look at this. What is this, man? What is this? What is he doing? What is she doing? What is this? There you go. Out of boy. Then why why does why are you allowed to walk inside the Roadhog composition in Nate? Why? Because look who's going with you. Not only are you rallying, but you have a Zarya inside of them. Your monkey's on the back line creating a space. There's no Discord. And yeah, and there's the Nate. Your team's aggressive, you aggressive, you Nate. That's that's literally just Anna. My team aggro, I aggro, Nate. Over and over and over again. Or if the enemy team is playing a really aggressive composition, then enemy team aggro, I Nate. Same, same logic. As you're just nading aggression. Either your team's aggression. <laughs> Did we get another nade? We might not get another nade. Why are you dropping? Ah, why are you dropping? Just stand up here. Just go back here and just like, just pipe them. Look at this. I mean, but the same, the same principle applies here. Even though you, you, you nade a fortified Arissa, she's still probably gonna die because you know nade. Your team aggro. Their team aggro. Nade. So. Even in a completely different map, completely different situation, completely different composition, we're still seeing nade issues. We're still seeing nade issues. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your nade is your biggest problem. Maybe there's bigger problems that you know about. Um, but that would be my recommendation from, from watching a small sample size is, is it's not your mechanics. It's just when you're looking for these nades and the priority that you're putting on them. When you're looking for them, you're not always timing them well with your team's aggression, with the enemy team's aggression. You're kind of fishing or just not using it at all. And then the, really the big one for me was the priority. It, it looked like you just were not prioritizing it enough. Like that's, that's, the, that's, that's the single most important thing you could do besides position yourself well. In fact, it's so important that a lot of your positioning revolves around, can I get a nade from this location? And if the answer is no, most of the time, the position is bad. Like you literally, everything revolves around nade. Like sometimes you'll see even like Ana's, I mean, Ana ironically, like I might even have you here. The best position for you as an Ana here might even have been to have dropped. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying this is good. I think where you are is better, but an alternative position here, I would rather have you here as Ana than here. Unironically. No, Unironically, because this is an easier nade. Like, imagine this: they come up the contest cart, your team pushes in aggressively, and then you flank nade. And you see this all the time in Overwatch League and Contenders. This isn't just oh meme ranked playstyle. Because if you time it well and you need this now, they don't have the, the like everybody's dying. Do they really have the time and attention and resources to go chase you in here? And if they do, you have self sleep dart and you have corner. So. I, this is obviously the better position, which we ironically fall off of, but I'm saying I would rather you go a little more aggressive to the point where you can actually position in a way that gets nades than for you to continue to just not, because you just don't prioritize nade enough. You don't prioritize nade enough, and it's, it's frustrating. You do whatever you need to do to get as much value as possible out of cooldowns without dying. That's, that's the strategy.